October, the month of Halloween, the holiday of cosplay and candy, as well as ghouls and ghosts and all kinds of other creepy crawly stuff. Vampire the Masquerade could be an appropriate game for this season, as could Dungeons and Dragons if you have the Ravenloft source books, but I've got something else in mind this week. In honor of the movie's 30th anniversary this year, I present to you the Ghostbusters role-playing game. The Ghostbusters RPG is a first in many different kinds of games. It was one of the first rules-like games as well as the first dice pool game. It uses a bunch of simple six-sided dice, and while the rulebook has lots of handy suggestions, it's easy enough to improvise stuff for this game once you know the basics. Creating a character is really easy in this game. You have four traits, brains, muscle, moves, and cool. Brains is anything involving your mind and senses, Muscle is your strength and resilience. Moves is your speed and hand-eye coordination. And cool is your ability to deal with people and not freak out when you see a ghost. Then, you have 12 points to split between all four of those. You need at least one point in every trait, but can't have more than five in a given trait. As you might expect, a higher number is generally better, and three is completely average. After you divide up all your 12 points, you get to choose four talents, one for each trait. Talents are things your character can do above and beyond what your traits normally suggest. Atomic science could be a brain's talent for a nuclear physicist, while remembering own name could be a brain's talent for somebody... a little less mentally gifted. After you split up your trait points and decide your four talents, you're done. Your character's ready to play, you're good to go. Just grab your dice and start rolling. Well, n not immediately, you don't really... You need to wait for the GM to, to tell you to roll the dice, but... Uh, give me the right to scratch already. Using your character in this game is just as easy as creating them. The Ghostbusters game uses several six-sided dice, and you'll need at least one of them to be a different color from all the others. Now, whenever your character's ability to do something is called into question, you roll the dice. The amount you're going to roll is based on the trait you're using, and if your talent also applies, you roll an additional three. So let's say, for example, your character has a muscle of four and decides that the most effective way to deal with a ghost is to wrestle it. You also happen to have the talent wrestling, so you would then roll a total of seven dice. Four for your trait, and three for your talent of wrestling. Then you add up the total number on all the dice, and if it's higher than a number decided by the GM, you succeed. I'll put a little chart up for the reference of any would-be GMs, and just gonna leave it up here for a few seconds for you to absorb all that. Or, you know, you can just pause it and write it down or take a screenshot or something. That'll work, too. You got it? Good. Now, there's one final rule that makes this game truly Ghostbusters-esque, and it's where that differently colored die comes in. That's your ghost die, and you'll always include it in your dice pools whenever you roll. Whenever the ghost die shows six, something bad happens. And... You might still succeed, but it'll come at a cost if you succeed with the ghost die showing 6. And if you failed, it's even worse than if you would have failed otherwise. The hardest thing to nail down about playing this game is probably whenever the ghost die shows 6. And that's because this is meant to be a silly game based on an equally silly movie. You can't outright kill the characters for failure. Frankly, that's boring no matter what game you're playing. Simply saying they fail without explanation isn't just boring, but also defeats the purpose of the ghost die. It's meant to add an element of bizarre uncertainty to the game. When the ghost die shows up, something has to complicate the story. Back to our character who wants to wrestle a ghost. Let's say he winds up with the ghost die showing six. We could say then that yes, he does successfully wrestle the ghost, but as a result of touching and groping a ghost for that long, he ends up becoming one himself. Turning into a ghost works a little better than just outright killing him or saying he fails, since the character is still around, they interacted with the world, and now there's a new problem. The problem being, is he a ghost because he died, or is he a ghost because he was, you know, wrestling around in ectoplasm for too long? And can he be cured? That's honestly all the rules to the game. At least it's the ones you're gonna need to know. The rulebook does have more details and a whole bunch of other stuff if you want to run a longer game. As for myself, I tend to prefer this game as one that you play for one night. Not having an attachment to the character can take some sting out of the ghost die constantly showing six if that happens. A one out of six chance of something bad happening doesn't really sound all that terrible, 
but if you're unlucky enough to have a GM that wants you to roll for just about everything you try to do, including putting your pants and suspenders on, you can easily be mired in problems as your suspenders try to strangle you because they become possessed. All told, this is a good game, and as long as you remember that it's about telling a silly story about dealing with ghosts, and so long as nobody goes in trying to build the biggest badass in the room so that they can win, this is a fantastic game. If you want more details, or even to read the rules for yourself, which I will admit I probably got some of them wrong in this video, you can find some scans of the original books online pretty easily. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you like hearing about new role-playing games, go ahead and subscribe. I tend to talk a lot about those. With all that said, I am Aaron Darshadel, and I will see you all next time.